Hey everyone, welcome back to our study this week of Malachi 3, well, 217 and then into the beginning of 3. Today we're in 3, 1 through 4, and uh, this section is called, My Messenger and I Will Come. When people are asking, where is the God of justice? Where did he go? You say, you know, he's saying he's there, but I don't see him. And uh, so they start calling good, evil, evil, good. God delights in evil. And uh, so they don't think he, he's just. And so they want to see the justice. And God says, well, guess what? Um, I have a plan. I'm coming. And, you know, here's what's going to happen. So, so Malachi relays God's message about another Malachi, another messenger that will come. Now, this is not the first time that people have heard about this messenger that will prepare the way. Isaiah 43 tells us this messenger's message. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Malachi in uh, 4.5 tells us that he will be Elijah the prophet. When we get to the Gospels, we find out that this Malachi is John the Baptist. Luke 1.17 says that John would go in the power and the spirit of Elijah and would prepare a people and turn their hearts of the fathers to the children, just like Malachi says in chapter 4. Matthew 3.3 says that John is the one spoken of in Isaiah. Matthew 11.10 says that John is the one that was sent to prepare the way. Mark 1.2 says Isaiah was speaking of John. Luke 1, 76 says that John was a prophet and he would prepare the way of the Lord. In Luke 7, 6, Jesus confirms that John was a prophet, but more than a prophet. So John prepared the way for the Lord. You notice that Adonai, the Lord, whom they seek, will suddenly come to his temple. This is the answer to their question. The God of justice will come. Peter says in Acts 2 that the Lord and Christ are Jesus. He is both Adonai and Messiah, the messenger and the prophet of Yahweh of the angel armies. The nation was delighting in the thought of one that would come to save them. Even Zechariah said at the birth of John the Baptist, He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets along, of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of of all who hate us. Well, who are all those holy prophets of long ago? Well, you got Malachi and Isaiah. But who can endure this day? That's the question that comes up. God has another question for the people. You know, when the Lord comes, will you be ready for him? Who can endure this day? Will you be able to stand on that day when he appears? He will come with justice. He will be like a refiner's fire or fuller's soap, a launderer's soap. A refiner takes the material he's working with and heats it in fire to burn off impurities so that the metal, like gold or silver, is purified. A fuller takes soap to cleanse the wool and cloth of all impurities, like oil and dirt. God says the Lord will do this to the sons of Levi, the priests, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to Yahweh. The Lord will cleanse them and they will belong to God, and they will be able to be the bringers of offering in righteousness. It's important to point out that the word for offerings is not the word for the burnt offering. It's not the offerings for atonement that these priests will bring. It's the grain offering. Grain offerings were given in honor of the blessings of God as a memorial not for the forgiveness of sins. It was done Grain offerings of Judah and Jerusalem when the Lord came would be pleasing to Yahweh as in the days of old and as in the former days, the former years. It's interesting to note that both Paul and Peter teach about Christians being priests and that they give offerings unto God. Peter speaks about God as a refiner who was testing the faith of the Christians by the fires of trial which would result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The day of the Lord has come, yet there is another yet to come when he returns at the end of this age. Augustine said that in this passage, the first and second advent of Christ are here brought together. This is more evident when we get to verse 5, which we'll look at next time. We see here, 
Malachi is talking about John the Baptist and Jesus coming. <clears throat> and these priests that will be able to give a, a perfect offering, a, an offering acceptable in, in righteousness, an offering in righteousness, can only be Christians. Because the priests that were giving, Hebrews makes it clear that the priests always had to pay, they always had to give a burnt offering because they were evil. Right? So they always had to bring their own offering because they had to pay for their own sins and then they had to pay for the sins of the people. These people, these priests, will bring righteous gifts. And so they won't be bringing animals. These are grain offerings that he's talking about. These are offerings that are of, of um, blessing of God. This is of a memorial of God, what God has done, his outpouring of his um, grace and mercy upon the people. That's why you bring the grain offering. It's a, it's a show that the abundance of that God has given, we give back to Him. It's what believers do today. Um, and so it's not an animal sacrifice. It's a, it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving, of honor, of memorial to God. And that's what Paul and Peter all talked about. That Paul and Peter both talked about that we are priests, to God now as Christians and we give sacrifices that are acceptable to God so and he, Malachi talked about that and it had to come Jesus had to come the messenger Malachi the Elijah John the Baptist had to come first and then the Lord came in his justice and changed everything and brought um, brought all these changes but there will be another day too and so when we get to chat verse 5, we'll see that a little bit more clear. So we'll come back next time and we'll take a look at that.